Hello everyone, welcome to the YouTube channel Mr. Net Physics Exam. And guys, today in this video, we are going to discuss some of the very important formulae from atomic and molecular physics. And this session will be a kind of rapid fire session uh, for atomic and molecular physics most important formulae and these are the formulae from where there are great chances that you can expect the questions in your upcoming CSIR net exam as well as in the gate physics exam so it will be important for like all the upcoming exams uh, related to physics now we are going to talk about uh, the first formula here what we will do in this session guys I am going to talk about the formula like I will say that oh we are going to talk about this particular formula you can think about it or you can write down that formula at the same time and you can check it are you thinking about the same expression for that formula if yes that means you know it and you are able to recall the right expression for this particular formula and you are having a good command on it but at the same time if you are not able to recall the exact formula you are not able to get that what was the expression for it which means you need to do more revision and i hope that when you are going to watch it here in this session when i will even write it you will be able to get like okay this is the expression i was making mistake at this point i think in this way this session can be helpful for all of you so I hope you all are ready. You can even take your notebook and pen with you. And now uh, when we will start the discussion with our first most important topic and the formula, you can note it down. I will even write down here, but I will give you some time so that you can note it down first and then you can check whether you are right or not. So it will be a kind of test for you. Okay. And how quickly you are able to recall the formula. So that's what you will get to know with this discussion. So guys, the first formula which we all need to write and we all need to recall will be related to the frequency shift in Gmin effect. So related to Gmin effect, what is the frequency shift formula? You need to recall that, think about it or either write it and here I'm going to write it now. So you can check, are you thinking about that same expression or are you making some mistake in the expression? So this is frequency shift expression that is delta nu is equal to E B upon 4 pi M. Another thing is that you can even write it in terms of other uh, parameters. Okay. And how you can write it? You can write it like this E H curve B upon 2 m h clear so sometimes it happens like okay we need to use this expression and why we are writing it in this way because we can further simplify it like mu b that is Bohr's magnetone upon h into b so this is how it has got simplified now if the mu b value will be given to you somewhere or you know about it exactly you can put it or sometimes they ask the question in terms of the Bohr's magnetone. So that's how any of the formula, if you know, you, you have written, you have mentioned, that's correct. Here B will be representing the magnetic field, mu B, Bohr's magnetone, H, Planck's constant, okay? And rest of the terms are just going to represent the simple things like M mass, okay? And you will write it for electron, mass of electron, E, charge of electron, clear and uh, that's how pi 3.14 or 22 by 7 uh, 7 whatever you want to write like you can consider that done now this was what this was the frequency shift expression now we are going to talk about the next one the next formula we are going to discuss here will be related to are you ready to write it i hope you are ready for that Lende G factor. So that is another very important expression from the atomic and molecular physics. If you, if you can recall it, if you are able to get it, just start writing the formula because I'm even going to start writing it here. Okay. And that's again very important one. If you make mistakes sometime in the sign of different terms, just be careful about it. Okay. So it's here. G that is Lende G factor, which is equal to 1 plus j into j plus 1 plus s into s plus 1 minus l into l plus 1 upon 2j into j plus 1 okay 
so i hope you all are getting it clearly and you all know the exact expression to memorize it even you can consider it in this way like this is a kind of trick you can use what is that that's going to be since we know j is equal to l minus s or l plus s okay uh, any of these expressions we generally use we put the mod there but what we can do since we will have let's say j is equal to l plus s so you will take the l which is present firstly you will take it on the other side and s for what s for strong clear so strong will always remain positive done and l will be negative so that's how you will be able to recall the sign in this expression and you will not make mistake if you were not confident about it i hope with this information now you will never make mistake in the sign of uh, l s or g okay now our third most important formula we are going to talk about will be related to the laser part and what is that formula let's talk about it quickly so basically guys our third formula will be related to the einstein's coefficients so as you all will be familiar with this thing that we are having two different einstein's coefficients one we represent with a another we represent with b because we are having two different processes generally the spontaneous and the stimulated so spontaneous is what in which the uh, atom will come to the lower energy state automatically after some time okay for example like 10 to the power minus 8 seconds if atom is right now at present in the higher energy level then after some time by emitting out the energy of some radiation clear some radiation uh, by emitting out the some radiation it will come back to the lower energy level clear and this is what spontaneously this process is taking place automatically it is happening and we show it with what since this is a state 1 this is a state 2 so we show it with a to 1 because 2 to 1 the atom has approached clear now the another thing is there is another coefficient we denote it with b and b is what b is stimulated coefficient because in the spontaneous case we are just able to observe the spontaneous emission so that is a to 1 and when we are talking about the stimulated case guys there are two situations you can have in the first one atom can be in the lower energy state okay and it can absorb some amount of energy in the form of radiation or as like electron beam you can provide it or in any way you are providing some energy to that atom okay now it will absorb that energy and it will move to some higher energy state so this is what this is the absorption so stimulated absorption can even take place or stimulated emission can even take place now when the atom is in the higher energy level and you are providing some external radiation again it will reach to that atom it will emit some amount of energy and what will happen it will come back to the lower energy state clear so this is what this is the stimulated emission so you can see in stimulated case you are providing some external radiation and then atom respond to that and that's how you are going to observe two phenomena while in the spontaneous case you were just observing the spontaneous emission clear so there we can have b12 or b21 because b is the notation for the stimulated case 12 for the absorption 122 it is moving 21 for the emission part okay now there are einstein's coefficients a21 b12 and b21 generally we take b12 equal to b21 these coefficients are equal to each other now our next point or the next formula i'm going to ask you to write that is related to einstein's coefficient so are you able to recall that what is the ratio of a to 1 to b to 1 okay now i have explained you what is the a to 1 and what is the b to 1 what kind of einstein's coefficients they are so you know about them now let me know if you know about the ratio of a to 1 and b to 1 and why you need it like where you uh, like you can use it further we'll even talk about that but right now uh, you can write the ratio of a to 1 and b to 1 clear i hope you all have started writing it now i'm just going to write it here as well 8 pi h nu cube upon c cube is the ratio of a to 1 and the b to 1 clear if you have given the correct answer for all the three questions i have asked you till now in the first one even if you have noted down any one formula your answer will be correct second and third if you have noted down correct guys 
you are doing good clear uh, now if we are going to talk about the use of this expression which we have noted down here for example somewhere you need a to 1 but the expression of b to 1 has been given to you and the rest of the things you need they have been given in the question so then in that case to find the b to 1 from the given expression or to find the a to 1 if the b to 1 is given okay and rest of the parameters values you know or they have been given so you can directly find them with this expression with this ratio expression and you will simply be able to get your final answer for that kind of question so there it will make the things more simple and easy for you now our fourth question will again be related to the Gman effect and what is that fourth question that is what is the wavelength shift okay or sometimes you can read it written like Gman separation okay in terms of wavelength so separation or wavelength shift anything whatever you want to consider so you have to write the wavelength shift formula and here I am going to give you a very important tip because sometimes by reading the questions students are not able to get what they are asking in the question okay what has been asked so guys for that what you can do you can start observing the units of the given parameters or you can start observing that what exactly has been uh, like given in the options what is that unit which has been mentioned so unit can make the things clear to you whether it is centimeter inverse centimeter hertz okay or uh, whatever it is for different parameters even start focusing on the units and they will make the things more clear to you now i'm going to write the expression for delta lambda what is that that's going to be lambda square upon c e b upon 4 pi n now you can even relate it with what with the frequency shift how because we know e b upon 4 pi n was what the frequency shift expression for the g man effect so you can even write it as lambda square upon c delta nu clear this is how you will have the expression for delta lambda and which is again very 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 important expression and you can expect and you can get the questions based on it in your exam so guys all the formula which we have considered till now and we are going to consider further are very important don't miss even a single formula if you were making some mistake somewhere um, focus on that part more and more okay so that further whenever you will require such type of formula you are solving any question based on any of these formulae you will not make any mistake any point of time clear so now our last uh, formula for this uh, uh, session okay will be that is for the rotational energy again this is like very much expected formula with like related to which you can expect the question in the exam so what is the rotational energy expression recall it write it and then see whether it is correct or not so here i'm gonna write it in terms of h even if you are writing it in terms of h cut it's all right okay so it's gonna be h square upon 8 pi square i okay j into j plus 1 now what is this j j is the rotational quantum number what is this i i is the moment of inertia if you are gonna write it in terms of h cut you need to know h is equal h cut is equal to h upon 2 pi so you can replace it accordingly you will write h cut square here and then in the denominator you will have just 2 i written okay so that's how you can replace it and j values will be like j is gonna have some values and j is known as what the rotational quantum number clear it's important again and you all need to know about it that what is the rotational energy formula i hope now anytime if you need to use any of these formula in the exam guys you will be able to use them you will be able to get the answer related to any of these formula and they will be clear to you as well so thank you so much everyone for watching this video till the end i hope everything is clear to all of you now at the end i'm just going to quickly provide you some information regarding the unacademy plus subscription so guys if you want to uh, prepare with the guidance of top educators we are having on unacademy plus for your upcoming csir net physics exam preparation then guys you can take the unacademy plus subscription because with the starting of the new month we are going to have the new courses starting on unacademy plus and you can start attending the sessions for all these new courses from the starting without missing any session so if you think you need the guidance, you want to attend the regular live classes by the top educators, 
and one more thing i would like to tell you here that is in each and every course we are going to have the doubt clearing sessions so in these doubt clearing sessions you can ask about your doubts too if something will not be clear to you from the previous classes discussion or even if right now you are taking the subscription and there is any course which is already going on and you want to continue with the sessions of that course you want to be regular there so if any of the sessions have already been conducted you will be able to cover up that part by, by watching the recordings of those sessions and that's how you will not miss any of the important points and you will be able to cover up everything also guys whenever you are going to take the unacademy plus subscription you can use and apply the referral code which is anjali arora as mentioned here no space in between spelling should be same that's how you need to write it and apply it and you will be able to get the 10% discount in the total unacademy plus subscription amount there are going to be many courses by the top educators which you will be able to attend and which are going to start in upcoming days okay so if you don't want to miss any of these important courses by the top educators you can take the unacademy plus subscription um so guys and uh, now what you have to do to take the subscription you can download the unacademy learning app you can select your goal for example csr ugc net and then you can proceed further to take the subscription subscription is available for different durations for example 3 months 6 months 1 year 2 years depending on for how much time you want to join the sessions you want to attend the regular courses the well structured and well planned courses you can take the subscription for that much duration now guys one more thing either you can download the unacademy learning app or you can directly search unacademy plus on google and that's how you can proceed further and you can take the unacademy plus subscription i hope each and everything will be clear to all of you guys and as i have told you that whenever you will take the subscription you can use and apply the referral code which is anjali arora as mentioned here no space in between spelling should be same that's how you need to write it and apply it and at the same same time you will get the 10% discount in the total unacademy plus subscription amount thank you so much everyone for uh, watching this video till the end thank you